I'm not dead. That sounds like something interesting. I want people to know that there's hope. Hope is not something people like Ann Havelock come by easily. The hell with this, I can't take it anymore. That's how bad the bad days are. Ann is one of roughly half a million people in the United States living with scleroderma. You just feel like you have nothing left in your body. It's dead. You want to fix it and you can't. There's nothing you can do except there, be there for her. Scleroderma is an autoimmune disease. Instead of your immune system protecting you from germs and bacteria, it actually attacks its own cells. And when you have systemic diffuse scleroderma, that's the worst kind you can have. It can affect every part of your body, every organ you have, your eyes, your nose, your ears, your mouth, your whole body inside and out. And the only thing that hasn't attacked me with so far is my liver. In 2005, two years before scleroderma symptoms showed up, Anne donated one of her kidneys to a friend. She didn't know how badly she would need that kidney today. I could use a new kidney, yes. At the same time, they really believe I'd die on the operating table because I have three lung diseases and my scleroderma. In 2013, Anne shared her story in this video. She went years without a diagnosis because doctors didn't know much about scleroderma. In October 2007, my hands got cold. And then they started getting really painful. And after five years, it, the scleroderma itself abates with some people. Early diagnosis is the key. The longer scleroderma is allowed to go undiagnosed, the more irreparable damage is done to the body. My kidney damage is irreversible, and my lungs are ir irreversible, my heart's irreversible. People expect when you go to the doctor that you're going to get fixed because they're the professionals and you're the patient, right? But in this case, we're actually the professionals there is what we do. Anne started the Scleroderma Angel well, we, Foundation as a way of connecting people yeah. all over the world, educating medical staff, and keeping others from going years without a diagnosis. She takes a lot of people and she brings them up. She lifts them up with her heart and her soul and her mind. Just plain hell for her. Just, but she's got the strength of 10 elephants. I had to depend on me to do whatever. It was a great life that we'd, we'd yeah. planned. Ann and Ray understand they can't go back. What have I learned from all? You can overcome anything in this world if you have faith in God and believe in yourself. Ann's story is sad. Her story is difficult. Scleroderma has ravaged her body. What she has been through with this disease, you can't even imagine. You can't. <laughs> even, <laughs> excuse me. I am not a victim of this disease and I'm gonna continue to kick its butt for as long as I can. Anne's story is one of faith, trust, and learning to find joy in the unlikely places it sometimes likes to hide. <laughs> Pray for a cure for scleroderma. I really don't have any fear. If I die tomorrow, 
I have no regrets. I've lived a good life and I have a, a love that people dream about having in their lives. And I've had one for over 51 years. You are my sunshine. <laughs> there is something about tragedy that either tears us apart or links us together far stronger than ever before. Bergdarma, no, he'll never defeat my soul. Never. Which one? That one. About a year ago, a lot of people in our community lost their hearing services. A big agency closed. You don't want to start over and you don't know where to turn. Grant's Hearing Centers will help you. I love being able to help people hear better. Yeah, that's the big thing. With your permission, Grant can access your files. Grant's Hearing Centers in Eugene and Cottage Grove. We put the hearing aids on, turn them on, and then they can actually, uh, it's just li like the light switch comes on. They can hear so well. Listening to you is our business. Call Grant's Hearing Center. I'm Tyler Marino. I've been a service advisor here at Kiefer Mazda for coming on seven years. I like helping people. Uh, that's what I was trained to do in the Marines is help people and now I get to do that here at, at my work at Kiefer Mazda. It is kind of like chess. You want to put the right customer with the right technician for the right concern. We got highly skilled technicians that uh, are certified, uh, that have gone to school to work on their Mazda and other vehicles and we just take that extra step with our training. And when you walk into our service drive, what I think is how am I gonna make you happy and how am I gonna have you walk out with a smile? It's not okay to be rude to me. Cause we're not mistakes. It's not okay to be mean to me. When you look somebody in the eye, you're not noticing their disability. You're not noticing their skin color, their sexual orientation, their political views. It's not okay to laugh at me. What you're really noticing is what's the most important, and that's the person. I love this because it's going to educate the public how important it is to look us in the eye and to treat us the way they'd like to be treated out there. Hi, welcome to the Water for Grant. I'm Chef Wagner, and today we're going to make my version of Trout Almondine. What we have here, we just have rainbow trout, and it's patted dry. Uh, we rinsed it off and patted it dry. And then we have fresh almonds that were lightly toasted, fresh cut parsley, kosher salt, black pepper, and uh, softened butter at room temperature. So first we'll get the pan going, and we want to bring the heat up to almost smoke point, meaning that the oil will start smoking very slowly, and that's when you want to add your trout. A little kosher salt, little cracked pepper, not too much. Start from here, lay it down, away from you. So the oil splats away from you. You don't want it to come up and get you. This is pretty much done. You got a nice golden brown. Okay, now we have it on low heat. And we still have some nice brown, what we call font in the pan. We want to deglaze it. So we'll take some lemon juice, deglaze it in the pan. Just kind of give that a little bit of a swirl. You'll see that the nice caramelization from the trout is coming off the pan. After that happens and you start getting some bubbling around with the lemon juice, that's when you want to add 
a good amount of your almonds, a little salt, a little black pepper. You want to get a nice bubbly action with the lemon juice. It's going to release the oils and the almonds, get that flavor all everywhere in this dish. Once we get that going there, we're going to add a nice little pinch of nice fresh chopped parsley. and We're going to turn off this heat right now. And then we're going to finish it with a nice dollop of unsalted butter. And then we're ready to plate it. Just drizzle it nicely over the whole fish. So this is going to be a nice fresh beet salad that will go great with the trout. First we have some nice local spring mix. And then we got some nice roasted beets, fresh. Uh, you can use canned, but prefer to do fresh. It's much better, great taste, very sweet. So we'll throw a little bit of that in here. We don't need all of them. So we'll put the excess over here. Then we're gonna take some balsamic vinaigrette. Uh, this was home, house made, meaning that we made it here, uh, but you can find this in the store. I'm just gonna add a little bit there to give it a little flavor, not too much. Probably uh, about two or three tablespoons. And next, a little salt, a little cracked pepper, and then we're going to just fold it very gently. You don't want to do it too hard, you'll get beet juice all over you, so just, just a nice fold, just to incorporate all that nice balsamic vinaigrette and seasoning all throughout there. So now we'll just take the same spoon and we'll just carefully place them right in the middle of these nice fresh local spring mix. We got some nice fresh goat cheese crumbled up. This is going to add a nice little texture uh, to go against a nice earthy, sweet uh, beets. And there you have it. Trout almondine, and that's what's cooking out the Waterford. New Horizons in Home Care, we've been in business for actually 30 years and we're the largest independent in-home care agency in the state. We serve medically fragile children all the way up to 100 plus. So it can be anything from, you know, basic housekeeping all the way up to some type of medical need that that person might have. All of our care managers that oversee the caregivers, CNAs, are, are nurses, and those nurses provide that oversight. We always have a nurse on call all weekend, all night. We are seeing the individuals that we serve as people who are active, who still have lots of life left. They're not uh, someone that is thrown away. I tell people I have the best job in the world, you know, to, to hold a letter written by George Washington when he was president of the United States. I mean, how many Americans get to even just do that, you know, and to be the person who takes care of that material, you know, it's a fabulous job. It, it's like all stored away in our stacks, you know. Um, yeah, it's just fabulous stuff. People could come in and use the Ken Kesey papers, the papers relating to um, Pacific Northwest literature, um, to learn about the migration of people from the Midwest to the West and the Oregon Territory in the 19th century in original Oregon Trail Diaries. I mean, people can come here and sit down and use these original documents, you know? It's like we've got this treasure trove of material. They don't really know that they have the right to come here to use these collections, you know? And you don't even have to be affiliate, affiliated with the university. Anybody could come and use these collections in special collections in university archives, yeah. is a little bit of heaven, really. <laughs> there is something about the ocean that draws us. I never lived out of sight of salt water. 
Jim Gibbs is as close to it as anyone. It was 1973 that he and his late wife, Sherry, were looking for a place to build their lighthouse on the Oregon coast. They found this spot, Mott's. Just as we were going out the door, he says, well, there is a place just south of town here that you might want to look at. It's like a jungle, though. You can't get in there. They did get in there. Jim's fascination with lighthouses satisfied once again. Well, I guess it goes back a long way. I, uh, of course, got real interested in them when they sent me to Tillamook Rock. Terrible Tilly, as sailors and lighthouse keepers like Jim used to call her. Tilly is just south of Seaside. You learned the hard way. I'd never lived in an isolated position before, and, and uh, the first couple of weeks I, I was thinking about jumping into the ocean and trying to swim the mile and a half to shore. That isolation stuck with him. He quietly lives on the cleft of the rock, <laughs> books on shipwrecks and maritime history, and keeping the lights on for the fishermen. We get a lot of good reports from commercial fishermen saying, how they appreciate the fact that we have a light here because rather than depending on it for navigation, they, uh, uh, they take their bearings on it at night. He watches the sea. The sea itself is, is like the moods of a woman, <laughs> changing all the time. And the sunsets and the, uh, the storms, and the gales, the winds and the calm, they all become a part of you. Jim says it's the inconsistency of the ocean that attracts us. Its unpredictability gives her just enough edge to intrigue. Well, the ocean is beautiful to look at, wonderful to see, but you realize that it's a place of death, too. Jim's home is like thumbing through the pages of history, shipwrecks and maritime history, moments long forgotten by most, forever captured in artifacts and photos. The main reason they, they, they survive is they have become monuments. It's like uh, an old sailor. And then there is that lighthouse, his lighthouse. And I think people like them because they're peaceful. <laughs> There's nothing uh, wrong about a lighthouse, if you know what I mean. For the most part, the lighthouse has outlived its purpose. And the original purpose of them was to save souls at sea. Jim thinks they still provide light to save souls, but the light provided is to our past, his past. And I've never accomplished anything great. I've never done anything that I can brag about, but, but I feel at peace in my heart. A landmark a beacon, a light that still shines brightly in the darkest spot. Old lighthouse keepers never, their lights just slowly go out. Back when they were planning lighthouses to be put along the Oregon coast, Cape Perpetua was scheduled to have one, but it never got built until Jim moved in. That's why he put it here, and his lighthouse is officially recognized by the U.S. Coast Guard. Credibility is huge. I mean, it's you put the facts together and you tell the story, the complete picture, then that builds your credibility. Trust is um, key because if they don't trust what it is that you're doing every single week, then they're not going to subscribe the paper. They're not going to buy the paper. They're going to look for other sources to find the news that they want. The best way to stay informed is pick up the paper, and if it's not in the paper, let us know that it's not in the paper so we can go find who we need to to get that story. It is about them. It's about the community. That's what the paper is. It's the community paper for Cottage Grove. And here's what's happening at the Campbell Community Center in Eugene. Urban homestead classes learning to expand your food choices, improve the quality of your diet with local bounty. The classes start in September, run all the way through December. The Holiday Bazaar is coming up. Crafts, books, quilts, wood items, and also baked goods. Happens on November the 5th from 9 to 3. And computer classes, everything from taking photos on your phone to the seven most important things you need to know about your computer. Also, energy assistance is available for some people over 60. You may qualify. For more information, call 541-682 
5354. That's what's happening at the Campbell Community Center in Eugene. For more information, call 541-682-5318. Planning a birthday party? Looking to make this the most memorable birthday yet? Look no further than Splash at Lively Park. Kids of all ages love a birthday party at Splash. Bring the kids the cake and get ready for a splashing good time. We provide the water, the slides, waves, and hours of fun. Call now to reserve our party deck, picnic shelter, or community room for your next birthday party. For more information, go to WillamaLane.org. Splash at Lively Park. It's waves of fun. In an era where newspapers are struggling and, and a lot of larger papers are dying, uh, we uh, are, are doing well because we tend to cover things local and we offer news that people can't get anywhere else. That, that's our model is covering local news and sports and anything to do with the community. Journalism and newspapers and uh, other media sources is important because uh, we have the training. Most of the people that are, you know, I employ have gone to college and studied journalism. And so what we offer is um, a source of news that can be trusted. Uh, you know, it, it's uh, in an era where everybody's trying to be the first to get the news out, uh, we actually do some research and talk to the sources and get the get the story and all the details behind the story. Here's what's happening in the River Road Park and Recreation District. It's time to sign up for the October day trips. Call 688-4052 to make sure there's still room on the list. Hull Oaks Lumber Company is the only steam-driven lumber mill left in North America. It's located in Monroe, Oregon, and we're going to take you on a tour. It's on October the 13th from 8.30 to 2.30. The Cottage Grove Dinner Theater is putting on a chorus line on October the 21st, and we're taking a group of people there from 5.15 till 11 o'clock. The Grub Club, one of our most popular events, every month a group of people goes to the newest, hottest food spot and check out what's going on. In October on the 25th, we're going to the Centennial Steakhouse in Springfield. And it's time to get ready for the October hike. We're going to Mount Pisgah, and that's on October the 20th. You need to call ahead to make sure there's room on the trip. For more information about what's happening in the River Road Park and Recreation District, call 541-688-4052.